Welcome back, everybody. The final quarterfinal match. Late one. Uh, they started at 11, and I'm recording this now. Not long after they finished, 12.30 in the morning. A little bit later than I would have hoped for, but is what it is, and hopefully we get ourselves a good set and makes it worth staying up this late for. We've got this guy, Mox, and Sharky King. Like I said, this is our final quarterfinal. As always, if you want to see how we got here, there's a link to the draft in the description. And let's get right into their best of three series. This guy, Mux, on the bottom, Sharky on the top. Titar Lead and Ludicolo, respectively, can both hurt each other depending on the set. But Sharky's comfortable with it, and Mux is not. Porygon 2 comes in and gets immediately leech seated. We'll either T-Wave here or get out of the way, most likely. It is the T-Wave, and Glalie is going to be paralyzed, but it's certainly going to stay in and try to spike up here regardless. And does manage to do so through the para as Skarm comes in for Mux. Moltres comes in, and we've got one layer for each player. Moltres here obviously going to scare away the Skarm. But Protect, just to see what it wants to do. Will-O-Wisp doesn't really reveal much of anything. Most of them do have that. And here comes Charizard trying to come in on Will-O-Wisp, and will do so successfully. They probably don't have anything all that exciting they can do to each other. Sub and Flamethrower, sure, does still pop it despite the resistance. So, Hidden Power, neutral, HP Ice perhaps. Man, that Flamethrower, 41% despite resistance. And Zard subbing up must be going down to Blaze range here. Going to retaliate with his own Flamethrower or Fire Blast, probably. It is Blast, and 41% to Denied here. If it outspeeds and if it is HP Ice, can follow up with that. And both of those things are the case. So Dragonite goes down, and the early lead for Mux. Right on here. Would also take a decent chunk from HP Ice. Kind of surprised that Mux doesn't stay in and go for it there. I probably would have just clicked HP Ice and let the Charizard go. Toxic, huh? Well, now he's certainly going to HP Ice, right? Since he's about to die anyway. Oh, ew. Surprise Protect on the other side. So maybe Mux is going to really kick himself for not going for the HP Ice earlier when he had the chance. Going to miss out on pretty significant damage on the Rhydon. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite him. Leaves us in a 5-5 to -five situation with an unrevealed for both. Giga Drain there, not even going to negate the lefties for Skarm. One layer pop, but both of them do have living spikers. Toxic, they're going to connect with Ludi, as does Leech Seed on Skarm. But one of these things is not like the other. One of them goes away when you switch. One of them does not. Spikes and Surf, sure. Ludi seems to have... A defensive set, Endor Skarm has a lot of special defense investment, but either way, that Surf not doing a lot. P2 coming in, also on a Surf, certainly going to be a recover turn here. See if Ludi wants to stay in too much longer, the poison definitely starting to add up. And it is the obvious recover, but it's a good opportunity for Sharky to get Glalie back in, it's very safe against the Porygon 2, and there we go. So two layers, ooh, not two layers to two. Missed the opportunity there with full para. Titar scares it away with a threat of a rock attack. Very well might be faster than Moltres now after Dance, and it is. Rock Slide accuracy cooperates. Moltres goes down. Mux, five to four advantage and an additional layer of spikes. But this is what I'm talking about. Imagine in this situation, if the ride on earlier had eaten an HP ice, would be totally different. The T-Tar could stay in, click Earthquake, and be in business. But now, out of the way it goes. If he ends up losing and fails to DD sweep, it very well may be because of that missed HP ice earlier. So we'll see how that plays out. I do like Muck's position right now, however. He's got the Spikes advantage. The Ludi is not in good shape. Granted, the Skarm is starting to get low. But overall, I still think I favor the spot that Mux is in, all things considered. Three layers to one. Porygon 2 comes in on Ludi yet again. And is promptly seated, but more of an annoyance than an actual problem. It shouldn't really change anything here. And Ludi is very soon to go down to that poison. But it's going to take Skarm with him. So we've got ourselves a brief tie game at 4-4. Four four, but Ludi is about to drop. 
And Mux takes the lead back 4-3. to three. They both still have a hidden poke in the back. And here's Glalie again. Hydro Pump just 27%. Not that great. Spike Slayer number 2 comes down. But in theory, Glalie should survive another pump. No. Earthquake changes it up and takes that out. 4-2 to two lead for Mox. Hydro Pump obviously going to kill Rhydon. Last Mon lacks the only thing for Sharky King. T-Tower we know is physical. And he's also got Arrow. He brought both on the same team. Man, he loaded up this first team. T-Tower, Skarm, Swampert, Arrow. Wow, he's putting a lot of his better Mons into this opening team. And he very well may win here. I mean, he's just like one critter flinch or whatever away from victory. And there is the flinch. He will need another, it looks like. But still, Mux has a good chance to win this game. Crit or flinch would suffice there. And yep, there is the critical hit. And there is the kill. So Mux does take game one. However, like I said, Titar, Skarm, Arrow, Swamper, those are all first round picks that he used in order to get there. And then the Zard, I don't remember when that was picked, but that's a pretty strong one as well. The only, like, sketchy, weaker end of the Spectrum Mon that he used is Porygon 2. Whereas on the other side, I mean, yeah, Sharky used his Lax, but all the rest of this is kind of lower-end stuff unless you really, really value Moltres. But basically the point that I'm making is I think that Mux used probably more of his quality than Sharky did. So even though Mux did win Game 1... He may now find himself having a bit of an uphill battle in Game 2 and potentially in Game 3. But if he can win just one game, whether it is Game 2 or a theoretical Game 3, then that's that. And he's through to the semifinals. So let us move to Game 2 and see what we can do. This guy, Mux, is going to stay on the bottom. Sharky King on the top again. Ninja Ask lead. Well, bad start for Ninjask with Intimidate. He's going to Baton Pass the Intimidate with him. Probably could have considered switching there rather than Baton Passing. There's pros and cons both ways. And they're both going to exchange status that neither one is going to be happy about. T-Wave and Toxic, respectively. And neither one comfortable staying in anymore. Vaporeon comes in. Substitutes as the faster Cloyster spikes up. Not going to get greedy. Goes to Mance. Back to Ninjask here behind a sub. Wonder if Mensa's says Roar or something. Yeah, it does. So Ninjask is not going to get to go crazy here. Might as well attack. BP is just hoping that there's a full para. And he gets his wish. So Gyarados gets one attack off before either getting roared out or simply countered by a switch. And the double edge is unremarkable on the Cloister. Not to mention the Gyarados is still poisoned. Spike Slayer number two coming down. Sharky has neutralized what Mux wants to do. And he's going to take the Vaporeon as well by outspeeding it with Boom. So he's going to settle for two layers here. Intimidate does not happen against the clear body Regirock. Does get Thunder Wave though. And full para kicks in. So what I assume is a Rock Slide turn is negated there. He tries to Dragon Dance up. But this time Rock Slide does connect and Gyra goes down. Advantage Sharky King as Heracross comes in for the first time. SD. HP flying, baby. One hit KO and gone. Now Metacham is going to try his luck. Full para, very much what he's looking for. Metacham of note does not have leftovers, so we're looking here at either a choice band set or a reversal set, which is very scary. And we now know that he's not banded. And he gets a crit and a full para there. Pretty unlucky for Sharky. Shadow Ball there is another crit on Regirock. Guaranteeing that Brick Break will kill. And of course he's going to switch it up to Brick Break. But Celebi comes in. Takes that just fine. Especially with the Intimidate. Kind of surprised that he's going to stay in now. Even through the Intimidate. Doesn't seem worth it for a 39% Shadow Ball. And he doesn't have Endure either. He's just going to get Psychic down. So... That's going to leave us in a pretty commanding position for Sharky, despite his stuff being slightly banged up. He handled that pretty well, and he's got himself a 5-2 lead, and one of the two is Ninjask, which is not going to be a win con here. So he's going to have to pass to something good, and we know that the men says Roar. Here's the BP. Last Mon Clefable is going to be the plan, and it is immediately roared out. I wonder if he's trying to get cute and go for Belly Drum with Clefable. 
which could win if it ever sets up, but I think that's going to be easier said than done. Should clearly soft-boiled here, and does. Toxic, however, going to be a real issue. Probably going to send us to a third game. Meteor Mash there, unremarkable on B, nothing preventing a recover here. Leech Seed works as well, Stab Return, could have killed with a crit, but doesn't find it. I don't see how Mux can come back from this spot. Return almost kills Celebi there. Celebi going to outspeed in Psychic, though. It's just going to die to poison, yeah, and it's going to be only Ninjask remaining against a team of five from Sharky, two of which do not even get shown. And that is going to send us to a third game to decide it all. Uh, this is kind of, I mean, Mux might have realized what I said, that he that he used so much of his gas in game one that he maybe needs to save the rest of it for game two. And Sharky, of course, unsurprising, this is a natural instinct for people to do. It's very, very hard when you're down a game to have the discipline to use junk in game two. So Sharky, of course, is going to bust out the Salamence, the Celebi, probably two other good Mons in the back as well. Because his tournament life is on the line. He's down a game. You have to win. There is no game three if you don't get through game two. So it's very difficult to try to save some of the gas in the back. So I think Mux, with how much of his good stuff he used in game one, made the right decision here to use some of his junk in game two. So hopefully that'll send us to a somewhat even game three. Which is where we're headed, so... Our first and only Game 3 of the round. Every other match this round has been a clean 2-0 sweep. This one, we do get to see a third game. It is winner take all for a spot in the semifinals. Loser goes home one final time. This guy mucks on the bottom. Sharky King on the top. Let's go. Our Maldo lead and Slowbro lead. They can both threaten each other with, say, Stab HP Bug and Stab Surf, both of which would have been super effective. But Mux is not comfortable, and Sharky is, and he did go for the Surf. Toxic there not only lands on Bro, but then he overpredicts and tries to connect with somebody else unsuccessfully. And certainly Recover is going to happen here. Not sure what Sharky's doing. Not cracking through this Milotic whatsoever with the Psychics here. Surf for 12%, lack of anything better to do. And there's your answer. The answer is the Bro is not in any danger either. It's got Rest. So Mux takes the opportunity to switch as Slowbro. Ooh, he does not even kill a Sleep Turn. He's got Sleep Talk. Fair enough. So he is Rest Talk Surf Psychic. One layer comes down, courtesy of Fori. Hidden Power there. Super effective against Reggie, huh? Hidden Power Fire, perhaps gunning specifically for the Fortress. BP to Mystery Bus here. Completely blanking Earthquake there. Would have been a good opportunity to T-Wave if you're Mux. Ew. His best switch into Mystery Bus is Tauros? I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that to begin with. Never mind the fact that he clicked T-Wave. Tauros here is going to be way worse if he's going to be stuck with that parrot. And it certainly looks like that is the case. Five Mons already shown for Mux, and I know that none of those things learn Heal Bell or Aromatherapy. Man. Toros into Mystery Bus, huh? That can't be a good sign. I mean, there, there has to be a better switch somewhere on the team into the Missy. Nitto King coming in. EQ, 45%. Can Thunder or Thunder Bolt here against the Milo? Switches to Jolteon instead on the obvious recover turn. Milo back to 100%, but takes 68%. From the Thunderbolt will obviously die to another one should it stay in here. And here comes Dusclops instead, but that really doesn't take it that well either. Is it some kind of weird not defensive Dusclops? Psychic. Man, Jolteon here, really an issue. Here comes Registeel, 26%. But crucially, still sleeping. And there's the BP to one of multiple things that can threaten it. I was going to say the Nitto King, but... Unrevealed Machamp works as well. Obviously an issue for Reggie. Bulks up here. Doesn't waste the opportunity as the Dusclop switches in. Hidden Power probably Ghost. I don't know, man. 
Wow, you're going to toxic a Gutsmon now? That thing is going to start hitting like an absolute freight train with two bulk ups and Guts. And that Surf does nothing. Cross drop there would have knocked Milo into next week, but that miss could really be helpful for Mux. Especially, oh man, another miss. I was going to say especially if he's got Protect as well because he could really compile that poison damage. Finally, Cross Chop connects, and it does not kill Fortress, so certainly with the aid of some luck, Mux is going to manage this Machamp that otherwise would have ravaged him, but even with this unlucky sequence, I still think that Sharky is ahead, not only up 5-4, to four, but remember, one of the ones that Mux has alive is the weakened, paralyzed Tauros that is going to do a whole lot of nothing in this game. Knock off there, whatever. Hidden power, whatever. And there is the double swords dance boosted rock slide. Probably would have gone for that before. Knockoff is whatever at this point. It just doesn't matter. And now Synthesis is going to try to leech seed stall him out. And might be successful at that. Armaldo being slower has no chance of ever flinching the Venusaur here. So he's basically going to need a crit. And there's no reason to not dig for it, so he's going to keep trying, but Sharky King, I think, in the driver's seat here, and he's just going to attack and kill him at this point. Lands Leech Seed yet again. Venusaur very, very annoying. Here comes Milo into Venusaur. Hidden power there. Resisted. We know the full sets. So we know it does not have a grass attack, so Milo is safe here. Here comes Tauros. That gets Leech Seeded as well. Hidden Power. Meh. Full Power. Aggravating. And here comes Missy thinking it'll be a normal move. And that is correct. Double Edge is going to go into thin air. Venusaur switches in. As does Milo. Neither one can really damage each other in any meaningful way. But Leech Seed is so obnoxious when you only have a couple Mons left. Tauros comes in yet again, but it is paralyzed still, and therefore it is outsped and killed by the Mystery of Us with a Thunderbolt, and Mux is down to just two pokes against five from Sharky. 15% Surf, Leech Seed finally going to not connect with Sharky, he's been pretty dead on with them up till now, and a critical hit for Mux, but Leech Seed should keep Venusaur alive. Surf and Synthesis, and Venusaur out of danger, back up to 76%. Certainly looking like Sharky is going to take this one and knock out Mux, but going to continue on. Thunderbolt and Toxic, fair enough. Toxic on Missy is good. If it doesn't have rest, it's going to be there forever, and we'll eventually get him. Jolteon comes in, and he's able to pull the trigger on Surf. Good for him. Jolteon down. However, can he survive the Nidoking follow-up? And the answer is no. Doesn't even have to go for Thunder or Thunderbolt. Earthquake, good enough. So only Registeel now. And it does wake up and it does find an Earthquake crit. Pretty lucky. But even then, still going to be dead here. As it is outsped and taken down with Hidden Power Fire from the Venusaur. And with that, Sharky King is going to take this series 2-1. to one. And we have ourselves a full semi-final. I'm not going to spoil who's in it. All the matches are on YouTube. You should go back and check it out if you've not already done so. But the semi-final matches are now known. And of those four players, three of them will walk away with cash. Only one of them will walk away with nothing. Speaking of cash, if you guys want to make the prize pool go up, please consider donating. The way to do that is to come into my Discord server, link in the description, and then click the PayPal donation link. It's fast, it's secure, it's safe, and I don't keep any of the money. It all just goes into the prize pool and gets redistributed among the top three players. Appreciate your support, guys. Please do consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. A good run for this guy, Mox, into the quarterfinals that he should be proud of. Looked like one of the stronger drafters in this tour, without a doubt. But it is going to be Sharky King going on to the semifinals with his 2-1 to one victory. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Semifinals just around the corner.